In in terms of intersectional theory, I think that um, Alida and Daya both fall into the same category, and we can see how Daya transforms into her mother, and even worse as the 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 uh, the, the seasons go on. But I think it starts with Alida and how Hispanic women are just you know supposed to be this so beautiful and stay at home mothers and. You know, and they're, they're being taken care of because of how beautiful they are. And that's the stereotype. That's uh, where the intersectional theory applies. And um, I think that Alida was involved into trouble because of how beautiful she was with her boyfriend and how he ran a drug cartel. And she was ultimately framed for that. And, you know, in prison, if we're going to stay with beauty, um, you know, she had like a, this little pet. Now, I don't really know how that works in prison, but... I'm guessing, you know, because Alida was so beautiful, she was able to have, you know, these people that would, like, just follow her and just do whatever she wanted. Um, when it comes to Daya, I think that Daya also um, ended up in the same path as her mother, even though, I guess, she was more innocent in the beginning just because of the way she was brought up, um, which I think Daya has that kind of mixed up, too, which ultimately le leads to her daughter being... Um, given away for adoption. Um, Daya believed that her mother wasn't there for her and that her mother kind of neglected her, which is true. But at the end of the day, I feel like Alita wanted what was best for Daya. Now, um, and you can see this by, there's an episode where uh, Alita comes home and tears apart all of Daya's paintings. I think this is because she was jealous that Daya was having such a great time. And I think Alita wanted that relationship with her daughter, but never had it. And um, Daya just ends up following in her mom's path, you know, because of this stereotype. She ends up going to prison and she gets a boyfriend. Um, and not a boyfriend, but, you know, she becomes pregnant with one of the, the guards, Bennett. and uh, Mendes, Mendes. And, no, Bennett. And then, um, and then because of that, she, um, she ends up having to, like, lean on him and count on him to do things for her. Which is, which is you know, supports that stereotype. And also towards the end of the of the show not towards the end but as the season's transition she she ends up with a character named daddy now daddy takes care of her provides her money provides her with the medicines that she needs outside of prison that she's not supposed to have and because of this she ends up you know doing very bad things and ends up uh you know just ruining her life and she's gonna end up rotting in jail because she's fulfilling this stereotype of that you know these Hispanic women need to just um, you know be taken care of by their by their their daddies you know and um, because of how beautiful they are. I truly believe that Daya was disempowered in this show, um, and I say that because she um, she shows that she, like what the stereotype is that she has to be taken care of, and um, yeah, like she does you know at the end like you know runs run things and she she runs this drug cartel in prison not a cartel but like this drug operation and um she she ends up being this whole leader and have people follow her but i think it's just disempowering her i think she should have gone to prison and she should have just done her time and not messed around with with officers like her mother didn't want her to in the beginning of the of the show her mother's like, oh, you're just going to mess around with, with guys like you've always done, like, because you're this slut. And I think, uh, I mean, I think, I, think, I think her mom was right, you know. I don't think her mom came at her the right way and didn't raise her the right way. But I think her mom was always kind of looking out for her. And I think Daya just ends up taking this downfall because she can't, she can't just do what she was there to do. She had needs this attention. She needs this, this love from, you know, the officer. She needs this from, from daddy. She just... Like, she just needs that attention, which fulfills her stereotype of that <clears throat> because she's this beautiful Hispanic uh, lady, um, she just needs to be taken care of. I chose to go with these three women because um, they they showed that they're, they're appreciated more because of their beauty and not because of what they actually do in their role. And um, uh, the three characters that I decided to go with is Angie from George Lopez. She is the wife of George Lopez and she always seems to get out of trouble or get out of whatever situation they're in 
because George seduces her at the end of the show because of how beautiful she is. The next character I decided to go with is Rose from We're the Millers. That's a movie where they um, uh, a guy, the Brad, the main character, needs to transport drugs across America, but he needs to build this fake family. And um, he chooses Jennifer Aniston because of her beauty, not because of anything else. When it comes to that mother figure, he has to choose like this beautiful woman. And, uh, well, man. And um, the last character that I, I decided to go with is Naomi from The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Naomi is appreciated and, and, and just she's there because of her beauty, not because of what she does in the show. It doesn't show any of her mother figures that she has or how she raised the children of Jordan Belfort, who is a stockbroker that is running an illegal business. And um, essentially, it just goes back down to um, when they split, he's just like going crazy because she's so beautiful, not because of anything else.